Hi, my name is Chris and this is Battle Nonsense. Google and Microsoft have recently announced that they are entering the world of cloud gaming in a big way. So I thought that this is a great opportunity to take a look at some of the current cloud gaming services to see if you really get that monster PC in the cloud that can run games in 4K at 60 FPS using ultra graphic settings. Or if the reality isn't as thrilling as the hype and marketing wants you to believe. So in today's video I will show you how much performance and what kind of gaming experience you get from the cloud gaming services Liquid Sky, Shadow, Parsec as well as Nvidia's GeForce Now which is still in beta. So to avoid any confusion this video was made possible by my patrons and my patrons only. I did not get sponsored or paid by any of these cloud gaming companies to make this video. I could have reached out to them to get free access to the services for the review, but I decided to approach this test like a normal customer who does not get special treatment. Only then I can be sure that my experience will be about the same as yours, as I then know that I don't get any special servers or something. I also want to mention that I decided to stay away from experimental features, which includes tweaking and coding settings in a config file or creating custom resolutions. Also, I made sure that I always use the exact same settings on every system to ensure that you can directly compare the results between these systems. So I guess that by now everyone knows what cloud gaming is about. Instead of having a very powerful, expensive and most likely loud gaming machine at home, you launch an app on a relatively inexpensive device which sends your input data to a data center where the game runs on an extremely powerful PC which then sends an audio and video stream back to the device you are playing on. So in theory you could then play any game in 4K at 60fps using the most extreme graphic settings while your device at home does not even get warm. The two biggest challenges that cloud gaming faces are input lag and image quality. To keep the input lag low, cloud gaming providers need data centers in many different locations, because at 50 milliseconds ping to the data center, cloud gaming isn't exactly fun anymore. And to ensure that the game does not turn into pixel mud, the encoder, which is running in the data center, must create a high quality video stream even at low bit rates. However, the player still needs a really fast and stable internet connection to ensure a consistent gaming experience. So, if you visit the Liquid Sky homepage, then you can easily check where they host their servers, which is important to know because you want to live very close to one of these to minimize your input lag. If you want to try that service, then you should go for the beginner plan, which gives you 3000 Sky credits, that's the currency you spend on your virtual gaming machine. Once you installed the Liquid Sky client, you can then power up your cloud PC, where you can choose between two different versions. When you choose the Pro Machine, then you get Nvidia's Grid M68Q GPU and 6 virtual cores of an Intel Xeon E5-2690 running at 2.6GHz, as well as 12GB of RAM. When it comes to the quality of the video stream, Liquid Sky is limited to 26 megabits per second, which results in a lot of compression artifacts and color banding. You essentially end up with what looks like a poor Twitch stream, unless you play an RTS or stare at the Windows desktop. For the frame rate, you can choose between 30, 60 and infinite FPS, though I did not see the FPS of the stream go past 60 even when infinite was selected. Then there's Shadow, which has a somewhat messy homepage. First of all, depending on which language you choose, you will get more or less info about what the service provides. And while you can check if the service is available in your area, the data center locations are not exactly easy to find. Should you decide to use their service, then you might have to wait up to 5 days before your cloud machine is ready. In my case it took about 12 hours, while the other services I tested were ready just a few minutes after I ordered them. Unlike Liquid Sky and Parsec, Shadow does not use a currency system. You pay a fixed amount and then you can use your cloud PC as long as you want. When I fired up my shadow for the first time, I got an Intel Xeon E5-2667 with 8 virtual cores running at 3.2GHz, an Nvidia Quadro P5000 and 12GB of RAM. However, there is no guarantee that you will end up with that 3.2GHz CPU as shadow has not rolled that one out yet to all its servers. So when I fired it up the next day, I suddenly had an Xeon E5-2620 with 8 virtual cores that ran at just 2.1GHz. 
A few restarts later I got back on the 2667 again, but I found it very concerning that you can suddenly end up on a CPU that has 1.1 GHz less per core. In terms of video quality, Shadow destroys Liquid Sky and Parsec. However, that comes at the cost of switching the bandwidth to 50 megabits per second, which is quite a challenge for both your internet connection and at times the cloud PC as well as it seems. Also unlike Liquid Sky as well as Parsec, you can increase the refresh rate to more than 60 Hz right out of the box. Parsec does not only provide cloud PCs, with their client you can also access your local PC from anywhere, like how Steam's in-home streaming works, just that it's not limited to your LAN. But today's video is about cloud gaming. Now, unlike the other services I tested, Parsec allows you to choose between different configurations and between AWS and Paperspace. You can also select where you want that cloud PC to be hosted. However, what is missing here is the core count as well as the clock speed of the CPU, which is critical information for a system that is meant to be used for gaming. I decided to go for the P5000 because that provides the same GPU as Shadow, so I did hope to see how the slower CPU affects the gaming performance of Parsec. Once you configured your Parsec Cloud PC, you can then buy Playtime, which is similar to how the Sky credits work in Liquid Sky. Should you delete your Cloud PC and create a new one, then your current balance will be transferred over to the new Cloud PC. So here I then got a Xeon E5 2623 with 8 virtual cores running at 2.6 GHz, an Nvidia Quadro P5000 and 30 GB of RAM. Sadly, Parsec does not allow more than 30 megabits per second for the video stream, which means that while the image quality is a bit better than what you get from Liquid Sky, you will still get a lot of compression artifacts and color banding, which does not look good if you play games that are faster paced than Minesweeper. The Parsec client does have a highest definition video quality option, but that didn't help much in my tests. Nvidia's GeForce Now is still in beta. It currently has a limited list of supported titles where only some are marked as optimized for the service. However, there is a trick how you can also run other games from your Steam library that are not on that list of supported titles yet. When you select a game from the list and then log in with your Steam account to verify that you own the game, then you sadly don't have full access to that virtual machine, which limited my ability to test this service as I can't just install a benchmark software there. From F1 2018, I learned that it uses a Xeon E5 2697 CPU, which runs at 2.3 GHz and has a Nvidia Tesla P40 GPU. Inside the options, you can choose between different streaming quality presets, as well as force your own custom settings, where you can also switch to 120 FPS, however, that will also disable VSync and it does not seem to work with all games. Because while it did work with CSGO, the stream was always locked at 60 FPS with F1 2018 as you can see here. So the idea is that a cloud PC provides all the performance you could need, while it costs less than what you would have to spend on an equally powerful PC that goes below your desk. But how much performance do you get from these services? To find out, let's compare them to my PC, which isn't the most powerful gaming PC out there, but it should be fine for the purpose of this test. It has an Intel Core i7-8700K, where all six cores run at 5 GHz, a Sotec GTX 1080 Mini and 32 GB of DDR4 memory. Now, in the Superposition benchmark, my PC achieved 82.58 FPS on average. Liquid Sky showed the worst results out of the three cloud gaming services that allow you to install and run any services on them. I sadly can't provide results for GeForce now, since you can't run that benchmark there. Now how about some games? The F1 2018 benchmark ran at an average of 217 FPS on my PC. Using the exact same resolution and graphic settings, Liquid Sky achieved an average frame rate above 60, but sadly the frame rate also dropped down to 38 during the benchmark. While on the other cloud services the frame rate never drops below 60. Ashes of the Singularity shows a very similar picture with Liquid Sky in the last place again. And Liquid Sky also does not look too good in Rise of the Tomb Raider, while Parsec, Shadow and GeForce Now provide frame rates that are nearly as good as what I get from my PC here. When we then take a look at GTA 5, then we see that Liquid Sky, Shadow and Parsec struggle here, while GeForce Now is able to keep the frame rate above 60.
A game or franchise that is not available on GeForce now is Battlefield, so I could sadly not test that game on that service. On Liquid Sky the game did not only look very bad due to the bandwidth limit of 30 megabits per second, it also felt very bad, as the CPU just isn't powerful enough to run this game properly, which results in the spikes that you see in the performance overlay in the lower left. Parsec produces a higher frame rate and feels better. However, there are still a few stalls which is why you see a massive spike in the performance overlay sometimes. And the image quality is just as bad, if not even a bit worse than what you get in Liquid Sky. On Shadow, Battlefield 1 really benefits from that higher CPU core clock of 3.2GHz, as well as the maximum streaming bandwidth of 50 megabits per second, which greatly improves the image quality. However, you still feel like you are watching a decent YouTube video or Twitch stream, as there are still compression artifacts and color banding. When we then take a look at this recording here from my PC, then this is what the performance graph should look like. A pretty flat line with very few small spikes, which results in a smooth gaming experience. And that is only possible when you have a strong CPU with a high core clock. I also tested Fortnite on these cloud services, and I have to say that I was quite shocked to see that Liquid Sky can't even run that game at a stable 60 FPS. There were also a few major FPS drops on Shadow and Parsec, but on these it did run quite well. Except that on Parsec I constantly got disconnected from the server for some reason. I did submit a support ticket about this issue, but after 36 hours I have still not heard back from them. So since Liquid Sky provides a really disappointing gaming experience, I decided to not do any input lag tests with that service. Now, to measure the responsiveness or button to pixel delay of a game, I use a high speed camera, a gaming monitor and a mouse which has an LED connected directly to the switch of the left mouse button, which will turn on when I press it. Then I point my high speed camera at the monitor and record what happens when I press the left mouse button. Inside the recorded high speed footage, I then look for the frame where the LED turns on and then I count the frames until I see the action triggered by the input, which gives me the delay between the button and the pixel or the input lag. Now, when I do this test on my PC at a refresh rate of 60 Hz with VSync disabled and while CSGO runs at about 300 FPS, then I get an average button to pixel delay of 24.73 milliseconds. At a ping of 25 milliseconds to the GeForce Now Cloud PC, the monitor set at a refresh rate of 144 Hz, the video stream coming in at 60 FPS, the game running at 250 FPS, which is the maximum that I could get with GeForce Now, and with VSync enabled inside the streaming options, I measured an average input lag of 107.3 milliseconds. Then I disabled VSync inside the streaming options of GeForce Now, which reduced the average input lag by about 17 milliseconds. And when I enabled 120 FPS in the streaming options, then this decreased the average input lag further to 78.2 milliseconds. With the stream running at 60 FPS on my shadow, I measured an average input lag of 101.5 milliseconds. However, when I increased the frame rate of the stream to 144, this then sadly had next to no impact on the button to pixel delay, and that's despite the FPS counter showing 144 FPS for the Shadow Client application. In Parsec, on the other hand, I measured an average input lag of just 88.73 milliseconds when the stream had just 60 FPS and with VSync enabled in the Parsec application. However, when I disabled VSync inside the Parsec application, then this had only a very small impact on the button to pixel delay. So what you can see here is that even at a relatively low ping of just 25 milliseconds to the data center where the cloud PC is hosted, I ended up with about 75 milliseconds more input lag, which you can definitely feel even on a 60 Hz monitor. Now there is one more thing that I would like to show you. What I noticed on the Liquid Sky and Shadow cloud PCs is that installing and updating games takes quite long. So I ran a benchmark to check how fast the storage is on these cloud PCs, and the results were mixed to say the least. Now what do I think about these cloud gaming services after I used and tested them for a while? Liquid Sky has really bad performance and image quality. 
Shadow has the best image quality, but your internet connection must be able to sustain 50 megabits per second to get that, and even then it still looks like a YouTube video. Also, you might suddenly end up with a CPU that has just 2.1 GHz per core, which is unacceptable, as that is simply not enough for many games. And being able to stream at more than 60 FPS would be nice, if that would actually lead to an input lag decrease. Parsec is held back by the low core clock of their CPUs, as well as the poor image quality, since you can't select more than 30 megabits per second. Again, I decided to stay away from editing config files for this test, as well as using experimental features. GeForce Now is still in beta, which seems to be going on for ages now. It is extremely easy to use, but does not support all the games. It provides good image quality if your connection can do 50 megabits per second, and it is able to stream at 120 FPS, but only for a few supported games. So at the end of the day, I cannot recommend any of these cloud gaming services, even if you are just a casual gamer. None of these services provide detailed information on the CPU that you will get. Even worse, the higher priced machines usually just have more cores, which run at a lower clock speed, and that is terrible for gaming. You see, the issue is that even though many games are now multi-threaded, which means that they use more than one CPU core, most of them don't use more than four cores, and even if they do, then most still have just one main thread, which does most of the work and so needs a lot of processing power from a single core. This is then why, when it comes to gaming, a high core clock matters more than a high core count. I mean, we just have to take a look at games that are known to require a strong CPU, like Battlefield 1 where you should have a Core i7-4790, which has a core clock of 3.6 GHz. So the Xeon CPUs with less than 3 GHz are just not good enough for games that require a strong CPU. Also, don't get overly excited when you read that a CPU can turbo up to 4 GHz, because this does not mean that all cores will run at that clock speed. It usually means that a single active core can reach that speed, not more. The more cores are active, the lower the turbo clock speed gets. And let's not forget that the CPU temperature plays a big role here as well. So in my opinion, none of these cloud gaming services can fulfill that dream of that killer cloud PC, running games in 4K at 60fps, streaming high quality, low latency video to your device at home. They can't even fully replace a mid-range gaming PC. If you want the best possible gaming experience, which means great image quality and low input lag, then you must get a decent PC and gaming monitor. But if you don't want to deal with the complexity of setting up and maintaining a PC, then you should consider investing in a gaming console instead of wasting your hard earned money and valuable time on cloud gaming, because none of them provide what they advertise. And that's all for today. This was one of the largest tests that I have done yet, so I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I also want to thank my patrons because tests like this one are only possible thanks to their support. So if you enjoyed this video and would like to support me as well, then you can find a link to my Patreon in the description down below, where you will also find links to my social accounts in case that you want to stay up to date on the videos that I'm working on. So if you enjoyed this video then please give it a like, subscribe for more and I hope to see you next time. Until then, have a nice day and take care. My name is Chris and this was Battle Nonsense.